environmental science subject code triple three module two lesson six natural ecosystem part one hello learners welcome to evs course of nios i am milam gupta course coordinator of environmental science welcome you in this program as you have learned in the previous program we have discussed about the concept of ecosystem energy flow through food chain concept of food wave etc we have also discussed about ecological pyramid, ecological efficiencies, biogeochemical cycles and how can we maintain balancing in nature. Whenever we travel long distances, we come across changing pattern of landscape as croplands, grasslands or forest, somewhere desert, mountain etc. We have also seen different types of vegetation in these areas. It means physical and geographical factors such as rainfall, temperature, elevation and soil type determine the nature of vegetation. We will discuss natural ecosystem, various types of ecosystem and other ecosystems such as grassland, desert etc. During this program, for this discussion, we have with us Dr. Lakshmi Nirula, retired associate professor from SGTV Khalsa College, University of Delhi. Welcome you madam. Thank you Neelam. Today I am going to discuss with you about the natural ecosystems. A natural ecosystem is an assemblage of plants and animals which function as a unit and is capable of maintaining its identity. A natural ecosystem is totally dependent on the solar energy and is self-sustaining. It is only influenced by the natural environmental conditions or the calamities. Biomes or the natural ecosystems are very large ecological areas on the earth's surface with fauna and flora that is animals and plants adapted to that environment. Forests, grasslands, deserts, estuary are the examples of natural ecosystems. The objectives of today's program are that after learning this you can differentiate between the various natural ecosystems, describe the various terrestrial ecosystems, know about the distribution of the different types of forest, grasslands and tundra biomes, fauna and flora of these systems, plants and animals adaptation to these respective ecosystems. As you have learnt in the previous program that there are two main types of ecosystems, terrestrial and aquatic. In this figure you can see the distribution of deserts, grasslands, tropical, temperate, deciduous forests and the mountains and mixed zones. Broadly we have classified all these biomes into the two main categories as already discussed. The terrestrial ecosystems are found on the land for example forests, grassland, deserts and tundra. Aquatic ecosystems are plants and animals found in water bodies which can be further divided into two subgroups the freshwater ecosystems such as rivers lakes and ponds and marine ecosystems such as oceans and estuaries near the equator on either side there are tropical forests followed by the grasslands and then deserts with the changing latitude as you can see in this figure that as the latitude is changing, subsequently there is a change from the deserts to the boreal forests at higher latitudes. Near the poles, it is the tundra biome which that contains a very limited fauna and flora due to the harsh climatic conditions. In this figure, you can see the latitudinal and altitudinal variations dependent upon the physiography of the place that is with respect to the climatic changes and temperature, soil and other factors. The various landscapes on the earth are differentiated primarily due to the type of physical geographical factors such as rainfall, temperature, elevation soil type etc. that determine the nature of the fauna and flora of these regions. This is another figure to familiarize you with the latitudinal and altitudinal similarity in the variation of the plants at different latitudes and altitudes. The latitudinal and altitudinal variations of vegetation vary. Now let us learn about the forests of India. 
the forests are large areas supporting rich growth of trees depending on the climate and the type of the trees that are generally grouped into the tropical rainforests, temperate deciduous forests, boreal broadleaf mixed forests, taiga or the north coniferous forests. This figure is showing the altitudinal and latitudinal variation in the displacement of the forests. As explained in the previous diagram, this figure also represents a change from the tropical rainforest towards the alpine and the polar tundra forests. Now, first of all, let us discuss about the tropical rainforest. The tropical rainforests are found in the high rainfall areas above 200 centimeter rainfall on either side of the equator having high temperature and high humidity. In these forests, the soil is rich in humus. Such forests are found in the western ghats of India scattered in Southeast Asia. Due to the presence of nutrient rich soil, these trees are tall growing up to 50 to 60 meters. The tropical forests also support epiphytes like vines, creepers, woody creepers and orchids etc. These forests are rich in tree dwelling animals such as monkeys, flying squirrels, poisonous dart frog, centipede, millipede, snail and many insect species. These are some examples which are found in the tropical rainforest as already discussed. The temperate deciduous forests occur mostly in northwest central and eastern Europe, eastern North America, North China, Korea, Japan, far eastern Russia and Australia. The climate of these forests has moderate conditions with respect to temperature and humidity. Temperature ranges from 10 to 20 degrees with 6 months of long winter. The annual rainfall ranges from 70 to 150 centimeter. The soils are rich in nutrients and they are brown in color. The word deciduous is derived from falling away after the purpose is finished. It is typically used in order to refer to the trees or the shrubs that lose their leaves seasonally most commonly during the autumn season as you can see in this figure on one side it is in the full bloom and on the other side when the leaves are shed by the plants. These forests show vertical stratification due to the presence of plants of different heights. Autotrophs of these forests are oak, beech, heath, chestnut, birch, pine making the top canopy of the forest. The understory is made of saplings, shrubs, tall herbs. The invertebrate fauna in this forest is comprised of green flies, aphids, certain moths and butterflies. The animals which are the primary consumers are the prominent grazers that include deer, bison and rodents. Rodents play a very important role in these forests. They feed on seeds and fruits of these trees. Black bear, raccoons, wildcat, wolves, red fox and skunks make the carnivorous animals in these forests. Hawks, woodpeckers, candid are also the omnivorous animals most commonly seen in the deciduous forest. These animals have the property of hibernation which is also called as the winter sleep. The next is temperate broad leaf and mixed forests are found at high altitudes on the mountains and middle latitudes. They occur in the areas where with a distinct warm and cool season which give it a moderate annual average temperature between minus 3 to 5.6 degrees Celsius. In some parts of Asia, the temperate forests can occur under very harsh conditions with very cold winters. They are stratified and tallest trees are up to 30 to 61 meters in height. Below this, the canopy three layered shade tolerant understory of plants is found with a height of 9 to 15 meters. These forests are composed of mixed deciduous and evergreen tree species such as oak, 
बीच बिर्च एंड मैपल टिपिकली द लोएस्ट ग्रोइंग मोस्ट डाइवर्स लेयर इज द ग्राउंड हर्बेशियस लेयर कंटेनिंग द फ्लावरिंग डॉग वुड दीज फॉरेस्ट आर वेरी रिच इन द एवियन फोना विच आर एंडमिक स्पीशीज दे इंक्लूड थिक बेल्ट पैरट विच इज एंडेंजर्ड स्पीशीज टफ्टेड जे ईयर्ड क्वेजल ग्रीन स्ट्राइप्ड ब्रश फिंचेस ग्रीन पैराकिट्स प्रोगॉन स्पीशीज मैक्सिकन जे वॉयलेट क्राउन हमिंग बर्ड्स स्पॉटेड आउल गोल्डन ईगल आर एमंग द अदर स्पीशीज विच आर फाउंड ओवर हेयर द नेक्स्ट इज कॉनिफेरस बोरियल फॉरेस्ट विच आर ऑल्सो कॉमनली नोन एज टाइगा दे एक्सटेंड एज ए कॉन्टीन्यूस बेल्ट अक्रॉस द नॉर्थ अमेरिका एंड यूरेशिया बिलो द आर्कटिक टुंड्रा ओवरलाइंग फॉर्मली ग्लेशिएटेड एरिया and the areas of patchy permafrost on both the continents the forest is a mosaic of successional and subclimax plant communities sensitive to the varying environmental conditions the taiga is the world's largest biome apart from the oceans there is no counterpart of these forests on the southern hemisphere since there is no land mass on this latitude on the southern hemisphere the climate is cold with long harsh winters and the mean annual temperature is below 0 degrees celsius long severe winters up to 6 months with a mean temperature below freezing and a short summer of 50 to 100 days are the characteristics of taiga the soil is acidic and poor in nutrients the coniferous trees are the dominant plants of the taiga biome these are the plant species commonly found on this in this forest the animals found in these forests are red squirrel deer goat mule and moose etc the carnivores which feed upon them are the timber wolves lynxes and bear the common birds found over here are crossbill thrushes warblers flycatcher robin and sparrows these are the pictures of owl and the american black bear next we come to the most harsh condition containing biome that is the tundra the word tundra means barren land since they are found in those regions of the world where the environmental conditions are very severe there are two types of tundra arctic and alpine the arctic tundra is at latitudes below the poles and the alpine tundra are found at the high altitudes on the mountain peaks these are the regions showing the arctic tundra in the northern region just below the poles they extend as a continuous belt below the polar ice cap above the tree line in the northern hemisphere it occupies the northern fringe of canada alaska european russia siberia and the island groups of arctic ocean on the south pole the antarctic tundra is very small since most of the south pole is covered with the ocean these are some of the common animals found in the tundra region the other animals and the plants of the tundra region are specially the plants the typical vegetation is cotton grass sedges dwarf heath willows birch and lichens the animals are reindeer musk ox arctic fox polar bear hare caribou lemmings and squirrel the polar bear are the most common animals of the tundra biome the hollow hair on the body of the arctic animals entrap the heat and also make the body buoyant they possess thick 11 cm thick insulating layer of fat this is an example of arctic fox which is highly adapted to the polar region the coat changes color that is in summer the fur is reddish brown in color to act as a camouflage on the land in winter it turns white and blends into the snowy environment they develop a layer of insulating fat to keep the body warm at temperature around minus 50 degrees celsius walrus is another example of the polar animals they are marine and feed on polar bear and mollusks a 6 inch thick 
layer of blubber keeps the body of walrus warm and heat stable in the body. They can dive up to 100 meter and stay under water for 30 minutes at a time. Their rear flippers are adapted for swimming in water and walking on land. They have lasters which are used for defense. The caribou is another interesting animal of the tundra biome. Their adaptations are in winter, the fleshy pads of their hooves shrink and their hair between their toes cover the pads to keep the caribou warm. They feed on lichens and have a large stomach to digest lichens. Here are hollow for insulating and giving buoyancy for swimming. Their coat fades to light color to camouflage against the predators. Now let's learn about the other biome which is very significant and important to sustain the life on the biosphere and that is the grasslands. The grasslands are the areas where the grasses are the dominant. The annual precipitation between 600 millimeter to 1500 millimeter. The average mean annual temperature ranges between minus 5 to 20 degrees Celsius. However, some grasslands occur in areas which are at a temperature minus 20 degrees and as hot as 30 degrees also. Grasses play an important role in life on earth in terms of primary productivity. The grasslands are found on all the continents and occur both in tropical and temperate regions. They cover about 14% of the earth's surface and account for 2% of the global phytomass, 17% of the global productivity. They are named in different parts of the world. The grasslands of Australia are called as rangelands. The grasslands in North America are called prairies. In Eurasia, they are called as tepes and in Africa, they are named as savannas and they are known as pampas in South America. Most of the plant life of the grassland is grasses. They include blue grama, buffalo grass, big blue stem, stretch grasses and little blue stem. The tall grasses will grow where the rainfall is about 30 inches a year. The big blue stem and the switch grass can grow up to 7 feet tall. The little blue stem and the needle grass types grow up to 4 feet high. In the Rocky Mountains, buffalo grass and the blue gamma grass are between 4 to 18 inches tall. The stem and the leaves of the plants contain chloroplast for the process of photosynthesis. These are some of the common birds found in the grasslands. The loggerhead strikes in the grasslands of Baldwin Hill is a songbird and a very intelligent hunter. Peacocks and bobbling are very common in the grasslands with the sexual dimorphism. The sparrows are shy birds and they live and breed on the tall grasses. Zebras, rabbit deer, badgers, fox as antelope are found as the grazers in the grasslands. These animals support the dairy and leather industry in the all over the world. The grasslands also support large population of reptiles, rodents and insects. Now we come to the next biome that is deserts. Deserts are the regions characterized by having a high sunlight and evaporation and minimal rain. There is water shortage and high wind velocity. They show extremes of temperature conditions. Most of the deserts are found within a belt centered on 30 degree north and 30 degree south latitude line due to the global pattern of air circulation and in relation to the atmospheric conditions globally deserts occupy one seventh of the earth's surface although most of the deserts are within these latitudinal belts but there are some exceptions to this the polar desert 
is near the poles and in the rain shadow zones the downhill side of the mountains. Greenland is known for being one of the largest cold desert area of the world. Gobi Desert in Mongolia is another example of the cold deserts. The temperature tend to remain steady year round and typically ranges from 18 to 45 degrees Fahrenheit. It is also known for having the largest national park in the world, Northeast Greenland National Park. The desert plants are adapted to the conditions of the desert. These plants have the following methods to meet with the scarcity of water. They are mostly shrubs, the leaves are absent and or reduced in size, the leaf stems are succulent and water storing, the stem contains chlorophyll to for the process of photosynthesis, root system is very well developed to entrap large areas for absorbing water. Animals are physiologically and behaviorally adapted to the desert conditions. They are fast runners, they are nocturnal and can store water and live without drinking water for a long period. These are some of the desert plants. The vegetation is very scarce and you can see lots of rocks in between. These are some of the common desert plants, the cacti, acacia, euphorbia, prickly pear, etc. The desert animals can drink water from their skin. The thorns on their body help them by increasing the surface area for the absorption. Armadillo lizard, golden armadillo lizard or the armadillo primi, uh, spiny tailed lizard are well suited for this kind of climatic conditions. The poisonous side winder rattlesnake is one of the common reptiles found in Monzave desert area. This is a bird which can drink water from its feathers. The herbivores in the deserts get sufficient water from the plants on which they feed. Gazelle and ass do not drink much water and they also do not urinate to retain water in their body. Camel is known as the ship of desert and can travel long distances without drinking water for several days. Water conservation in camel is in the hump. Long periods of without food and water is characteristic of camel. Protection from the heat is done by them by a thick fur and under wool that provide warmth during the cold desert nights and insulation against the daytime heat. The long appendages and the body is raised above the ground. A slit like Closable nostril protects against the blowing sand and moistens the air going to the lungs. The desert animal lose their body heat through the large appendages. For example, the sand fox, it has long appendages and the body is, they are nocturnal in the Sahara deserts and they follow the Bergman rule that is the body is slender and thin and the ears are big. The tail is very thick for losing the heat. Thank you Dr. Lakshmi Rura for sharing information related to natural ecosystem such as forest, desert and grassland. Before we wrap up, we would like to recap the main points that is what you have learned. Natural ecosystems are formed as a result of interaction of regional climate with the regional substrate without the interference by man. Natural ecosystems can be classified into two types that is terrestrial and aquatic. Terrestrial ecosystems are forest, grassland, desert and tundra. Similar attitudinal and latitudinal variations in the climatic conditions result in nearly identical distribution patterns of natural ecosystems from sea level to high mountain peaks and equator to poles. Each ecosystem has its own physical and chemical characteristics that determine the type of its fiona and flora. Animals and plants are adapted to these physiographic conditions. Dear learners, this is all about the part of part 1 of the natural ecosystem that is lesson number 6. We will come again to meet you with a new program of environmental science. 
थैंक यू हिंदुस्तान के हर कोने में नौजवानों के पास प्रतिभा है उन्हें अवसर चाहिए एन देता रहा है युवाओं को अवसर आगे बढ़ने का एन से पढ़ने वाले इन युवाओं ने किया है संस्थान को गौरवान्वित दिव्यांगों ने बनके दिखाया है सबल और आत्मनिर्भर एन के साथ आप भी जुड़िए एन के संग प्रकाशित करने राहों को आलोकित करने हम अपना दीपक स्वयं बने हम अपना रास्ता स्वयं चुने जीवन ये प्रकाशित करने राहों को आलोकित करने पढ़े हम कहीं पढ़े वे विषय के लोच से युक्त हो कभी पढ़े हम कहीं पढ़े वे विषय के लोच से युक्त हो मित्रों हम उठे और जागे ये प्रकाशित करने राहों को आलोकित करने के हर कोने में नौजवानों के पास प्रतिभा है उन्हें अवसर चाहिए एन देता रहा है युवाओं को अवसर आगे बढ़ने का एन से पढ़ने वाले इन युवाओं ने किया है संस्थान को गौरवान्वित दिव्यांगों ने बनके दिखाया है सबल और आत्मनिर्भर एन के साथ आप भी जुड़िए एन के संग